Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Chances are you've heard about or will be hearing about this, the PD Nation Power Tool Battery by Sener. It's essentially a universal power tool battery that can work on most any brand. Well, any 18 to 20 volt brand, and for now, starting with 9 to 10 of those brands. Based on the amount of you DMing us this outfit and the number of content creators I've heard with these on the way, we wanted to show here what all the fuss was about, so we emailed them asking if we could buy and ship one. I know, a bit strange, but channel rules and all. So today we're going to test it on, well yeah, given what we like around here, a lot of impact wrenches, but to keep things interesting and add to our rankings, some new tools we bought along the way to test as well as see how they stack up with their included battery versus this new PD Nation one. As well as things like duration, voltage drop, the dropping type of drops, chemical resistance, and teardowns. So this is it. And let's be honest though, being a channel got us in the door to be able to buy one this early, but I can confirm this is a retail example. Think of it like a 4 amp hour at 18 or 20 volt, or a 20,000 milliamp hour power bank at normal USB levels that can quick charge up to 2 amps out, but is packed with cells, not put there for capacity, but also spicy enough to power multiple brands worth, including DeWalt, Milwaukee, Works, Craftsman, Bosch, Makita, Porter Cable, and more. Or so they say, so let's find out. Charging this thing up from dead here, it's going to take USB-C, which has its upsides and downsides. It can take 15 to 15 volts or 20 volt, which is good. And that means like three amps or 15 watts from a three amp wall adapter like this one, and with a laptop or Chromebook type USB-C charger up to 45 watts from this 65 watt capable charger. It's not lightning fast, basically like one of those old Ryobi chargers they threw in with everything, but if their whole deal is flipping the middle finger to proprietary batteries for each colored tool out there, it does make sense that they didn't want you to have to use their fast charger, and a 4 amp hour in this case took 1 hour and 42 minutes for us to charge. I'll be honest though, I fully support the effort to wrestle free the chokehold brands have over their customers with matching color designer batteries at crazy prices these days. If this sort of thing does gain momentum, it might even put pressure on them to price these more reasonably, which is a win-win for everyone, not just PD Nation's customers. This package is, for example, 69 bucks, which isn't the cheapest thing in the world, but each brand you add to that is just $20 once for the adapter. And these are going to be like $49.99 for the battery setup when introduced. That's what they say. Again, no affiliation, no kickbacks, no promo codes here. Let's see how it does starting over on the low end of battery drawing tools with this Makita impact driver. This XWT19Z is one of my favorite tools to use. Balance, vibration, trigger modulation are all just damn good things to have when working on small fasteners and screws. And today, it's making, looking to be 146 foot-pounds in reverse with a 5 amp hour Makita battery in our 10 second max torque test. Here's what the new PD Nation battery adapted onto the Makita. 4 amp hours, but a single row of 21700s allowing for it to be similar in size with its Makita hat on. One hundred and forty seven foot pounds. So the same Makita doesn't make a single row twenty one seven hundred cell pack, but we often find they match about what a two row eighteen six fifty five amp hour battery does. And we're seeing that here so far. Good stuff. Speaking of capacities, though, let's compare it against a brand that does make a four amp hour single row twenty one seven hundred cell pack. DeWalt. We've not had much luck at all with the aftermarket batteries and advertised capacities on this channel. The lying rate is hovering around 100% right now on the channel for those. This is what the DeWalt versus PD Nation looks like when drawn at a steady 5 amps or around 100 watts worth of starting draw. And the PD Nation is a larger battery capacity, neither of them nominally 4 here because of the high discharge rate and safe parameters we gave it, but amp hours and watt hours are looking to favor the PD Nation pack by around 10%. So it's actually like a 4.2 to 4.4 amp hour pack. Pretty cool. We do find that you might need that though. An odd quirk of this product is that in power bank mode, the charge level display turns off, but with your choice of brand attachment on, the charge level lights 
don't turn off. Seems like an easy fix for them if this is by accident, but we estimate with measurements that around quarter volt per day is being used just showing off those green bars if left attached and not charging. Back to the dyno though and bigger demands from that battery. First with the M18 Gen 2, its best run was 778 foot-pounds with an XC 5.0. Here's with the PD Nation. Seven hundred and eighty four about the same maybe a tad more at the end there But overall equal which is what we'd expect to see from a high output 3.0. That's good stuff Now let's throw in a cordless drill for a change Then we'll return to even bigger high torques and some weird things we noticed This is the craftsman v20 brushless drill CMC d 710 or 713 if it has an RP sticker on it same tool It's not a drill we've tested before though We feel it could place well among our standard drill driver ranking at 100 to 115 bucks, it's fairly well priced, but in our budget list here, would be well out in front with that stat. Though cheaper than any of the other cordless hammer drill kits we've tested thus far. It's 7.6 inches long, which is not shabby, especially from the same folks who make DeWalt, which can have some rather long drills in their line. So let's see how it does with its included 2 amp hour battery versus a Craftsman 4 amp hour and the PD Nation 4 amp hour. Then we'll also let you know how the tool ranks in general versus the others we've tried. Starting off by heading over to the dyno brake, this measures just pure torque until the drill stalls. And the Craftsman with a simple included 2 amp hour 18650 battery makes 19.25 foot pounds. Yeah, 19.3, that's a lot. The latest Ryobi HP brushless with a 4 amp hour makes 16.3. Dang, that's not bad. With the new PD Nation 4 amp hour slapped on, the Craftsman V20 now makes about 22 foot pounds, 21.9. And with the not included but still common 4 amp hour Craftsman battery, that's most similar in size to the PD Nation battery, but around 10% less capacity as we measure it, that's making 24, yeah, 24 foot pounds, so a 2 foot pound gap between OEM and aftermarket here. Quite good overall for the tool, 24 foot pounds beats a DCD805 DeWalt with any battery we've tested, a drill we like a lot, so surprised to see it. In low, on the Watts Dyno, basically a measure of how much work the tool can get done, power at speed, the Craftsman makes 390 watts. With the gap to a larger, more capable battery being a bigger one now, the PD Nation racking up 510 watts from the tool Craftsman only rates at 350 unit watts out. That's curious. The 4 amp hour red battery that matches the tool does similarly here, little difference, 520 watts, which is still quite good. And in case you're curious and just want to see it, the Craftsman top of the line 9 amp hour battery is good for, yeah, a good amount more here, but not night and day, 570 watts. And lastly, in high now, from the little red tool that could, we get a whole 540 watts with the 2 amp hour battery, and then 600 watts with the PD Nation, and 640 watts with the 4 amp hour Craftsman battery. And the boat anchor off the end looking one makes a little bit more than that, 650 watts. A big battery, not all that worth it on this tool, which I personally like to see. Lighter and cheaper to get the most out of the tool is always gonna be better in my opinion. Totaling things up for this tool, it's 3.4 pounds starting it off with a deficit of 34 points. Similar to the Bauer and the Brushless Heart competition down here, these are turned into points as so with its included battery and a Craftsman 4 amp hour. And that's 70.4 and 57.1 points as a function of its length when it comes to watts out and torque. And totaling all this as a function of its price, that's 85.7 points, making for an even 480 points, placing it well above the others and miles away from the main hardware store competition of Walmart and Harbor Freight here. And with equivalent batteries, two and four amp hour, it beats a Ryobi HP as well for less. A surprising recommendation on this one, not that we expected it to be bad, and I'd probably replace that chuck, it's not my favorite, but it really didn't stumble anywhere in performance and does nearly as good with the included two amp hour battery than any other, which means no pricey upgrade or extra weight needed. That's always nice. And so far, that PD Nation, eh, falling in there near a standard 4 amp hour battery, which, hey, 
that's top shelf on this channel when it comes to aftermarket batteries, which normally are quite terrible for us. But that's not to say we didn't find some faults in this new guy. The latest gen high torques like stuff out in the last six months or so, it not so much likey. A gen three Milwaukee tends to cut out every time you use it. So does a DCF 961, that big guy, unsurprisingly, once it steps up into VTEC and current spikes, it cuts out. A DCF 900 released around a year ago and definitely a beast, we actually got 834 with the PD Nation. But that did take several tries, many times it too would cut out. And each time the battery cuts out, you have to throw it back on the USB charger to bring it back to a reset, which can be annoying. Now, this isn't strange. We've seen a similar behavior on the Gen 3 Milwaukee with our own creations cutting out like this and similar battery behavior with DeWalt batteries on other tools cutting out and needing to go back on the charger to wake up when we're doing stupid things with them. So we're curious what is inside this thing and what might be going on when looking at a simple Voltage drop, the amount of voltage sag your tool sees when under 600 watts worth of draw here for a single row 21700 cell pack, the Bosch core battery we'll be using shortly drops to 16.7 volts or so over 10 seconds of what would be your trigger time. And the DeWalt, same sort of battery does similarly, but slightly better here, 16.9 volts on average. The PD Nation is a bit of another story. We're seeing with this one more of a drop all the way down to 15.6 volts under 600 watts worth of load. Thinking that could be the adapter, thin gauge wires or metal just transferring in efficiently, we also tested the power bank directly and saw some change, but nothing really all that noteworthy. We feel up to 15.8 volts now. So this would normally imply not a very spicy or well-chosen battery cell inside or poor power connections, materials, or board. Opening this thing up is rather simple and sort of cool. The panels pop off of each side when unscrewed. And inside we find very much the opposite of a simple board, connections, and monitoring. And much of the delicate bits have conformal coating on it to protect against some of the elements. And those elements for the most part are not going to include brake clean, not that the board itself was ruined, it seems, but one of the tests we like to do to tools and batteries is take brake clean to them and see if the material is softened enough to scrape, scratch, and discolor, which in this case seems to be the case on the case. In ABS, or at least ABS blend, it would appear instead of the usual polycarbonate or PA6 nylon, which is used by many power tool brands. We'll see how that affects things with drop testing coming up, but it would bury the lead here to not mention that what we found under the hood was some Molecel P42A cells up inside this thing with a bit of brake clean smear and a QR code and batch code blacked out by them. Not sure why. That would explain the capacity difference we were seeing. The P42A is a 4200 milliamp hour battery making for 4.2 amp hours instead of four. And yes, I've confirmed it's not just mine. I asked in this production run of PD Nation packs are all using the same spicy Molecel P42A batteries that we tend to like to use to make high performance batteries with. Though they said they have contracts with Samsung for 40Ts as well, which is an eventual possibility, basically what DeWalt and Milwaukee use. So what's going on inside of these things then? Well, on a Bosch seven and a quarter inch circular saw, a tool we'd never recommend using a four amp hour battery on, Bosch uses Samsung 40Ts in their four amp hour core battery as well, accelerated at around 35 amps discharge. And here that's able to muster 490 watts out the dyno motor. Not a lot, again, not the type of battery for a large saw we recommend, but the PD Nation is able to, under the same circumstances, generate just 350 watts with a known to be spicy P42A capable of 45 amps. From what we can tell, this is what's going on. The PD Nation is just playing it very safe. If and when it senses an excess of wattage draw or sudden load approaching its ceiling, it shuts everything down, which if you're plugging into a dozen different brands is probably some insurance, I imagine. But we find that wattage level to be just about 630 watts before the thing turns off which might also explain why in voltage drop tests it did poorly here, testing at 600 right near where it's throttling and turning things off. And the DeWalt, which should only be realistically drawing 630 watts total with its cells, is happily pulling 750, 770 up to near 800 watts with no issues. So it seems like PD Nation could have done similarly. All right, let's drop test this thing and then we'll summarize our findings. Now, despite being ABS with some 
brake clean abuse first, we decided to drop this pack 15 times or until it breaks or just stops working. And dropping it from various sides at increasing heights up to 12 feet. The adapter hat would burst loose at times from dropping. Also the USB out plug got eventually beat up and you can no longer get a plug in there to charge your own electronics with. And finally the green LEDs stopped displaying charge level. But all that said, it braved 15 drops and still works and charges as usual. We'll have to use it more long term to know for sure, but this is getting a thumbs up from us. Given how long M18 batteries last for us, I think this is our third one down in a year at the shop. Screws pull through even with better materials. I'd say PD Nation would be lasting just as long or more. So what do we think of this system? Well, the idea for something like this is awesome. Currently, you're getting a 4 amp hour battery. That's 4.2 amp hours. It powers small impacts to medium large impacts, no problem. Mid to mid high level cordless drills without hiccups as well. Though you could get a little bit more performance with a different name brand battery. But once you have that, usually $90 plus battery, it's going to work with just that brand, which is stupid. Let's not beat around the bush. The entire industry would be better served if cordless tools were like air tools. You have a power source, then you just pick your favorite tools to plug into that regardless of brand and color. Sort of like the early stages of the battery alliance forming in Europe. Currently the latest and highest draw impacts and drills and tools that always draw a lot like saws are going to make this thing freak out a bit, which I think their effective 600 to 650 watt ceiling, while maybe more practical and safe, is a bit lame. They should turn up the dial on those mall cells and let them breathe a bit, otherwise why use them? Now does that make it so you can't use the tool? Well no, it feels similar to using like a Bosch 4 amp hour in this case. You notice the difference only when maxing it out, stalling it, doing the most that the tool can do. So I imagine it won't come up as often for many people as it does here for us, which for this saw, it's max actually when using an 8 amp hour Profactor battery, it was meant to, is upwards of 800 watts, 810 watts here. It's no slouch. We'll be doing the remainder of its testing to add to the charts in our next Cirque Saw Roundup. So just saws you want to see that we haven't tested below. But a battery like that, an 8 amp hour double stack of 21700s, coming out from PD Nation with at least twice the wattage ceiling they have here would solve a lot of the shortcomings we did see. We hope to see that and more brands this can work on in the future. Hopefully more and more sales of products like this will cause brands in the US to stop the drug dealer mentality of the first one's free, then it's an arm and a leg. Until then, we make episodes every Friday. Click below to be shown those sometimes, and thanks for watching.